But now we come back and talk about hardcore politics. So this week has been very adventurous. It's been very interesting. The new patriotic party has to elect the next flag bearer um, to come up against whoever the NDC uh, is going to choose. Well, presumptively, it's going to be the former president, John uh, Dramani Mahama, as it stands. And, you know, uh, I have said that within the NDC, I don't see anybody who can uh, topple him from that position. So, but, but, but before they do that, they have to settle. I'm talking about the MPP. Before they do that, they have to settle on a date for all kinds of things, filing of nominations, picking up of forms, um, bringing back the forms, and the election itself. But the party's been struggling. And two schools of thought have emerged. One school of thought is suggesting that if you, if you roll out or if you do an early Congress, two power centers will emerge. And when the two power centers emerge, it can possibly um, affect adversely um, the, the administration of His Excellency and another Dan Kweko Fuado. And so let's keep to what the party's constitution has said, which is 12 months before the next elections. So you can do it in December. You can do it in January next year. But there are also some who say that let's do it early because, look, <laughs> this is going to be a very difficult election uh, for the new patriotic party. One, because they want to break their eight. Two, because the economy is not looking good, and we all do know that. Um, of course, they themselves have told you that if elections were held today, it doesn't look like the MPP, or the MPP will struggle to win, or in fact, you're likely to lose. And so you need to get a leader who would hit the ground running and to fix some of the cracks or the challenges that the government is facing, both party and government. So two schools of thought have emerged. And so the National Executive Council have been meeting you know, um, have a meeting. In fact, they started a meeting on Thursday. It ended inconclusively. There was a big deadlock. And Friday, they said, well, we had the general secretary say, we're going to consult a few other people, even including perhaps the aspirants, at least those who have uh, uh, thrown their heart into the ring and asked to pick their thoughts before we come back and, you know, conclude on our deliberations as to when we're going to elect our flag bearer and our parliamentary candidate. So, um, that's where the MPP finds itself. But why? So the question we want to ask is, why the struggle? You know, and really, if you, if you listen to the arguments that have been posited by the two, both, you know, the two for and against early or late Congress, which of them makes more sense to you as, as a viewer? And, you know, you're free to send us uh, a WhatsApp message on that as well. So please do send us a WhatsApp message to 0249-155646. 0249-155646. That's the WhatsApp and text line. If you have any opinion you want to express on that, I'll be very happy to see you, so to hear from you. And the second issue which my guest will be tackling has to do with the corruption perception index. We're still not doing well. We've, we've actually stagnated. We are 72 out of 180 countries. Now, remember that the lower you are in the rank, it means that the poorly uh, you're performing. And the higher you go, it means the better. Okay, so that's how it works. It's not the, op it's not the, it's not the opposite. Um, so it is what it is. We've been 43, 2020, 2021, and 2022. We're still 43. So something is true. And I'm talking sub-Saharan Africa, 72 global. So that's where we find ourselves. So let me introduce my resource persons to join us, and I'm grateful for them. At some point, we'll also be joined by Dr. Kusi Amache uh, Boate, who is a political uh, science lecturer at University uh, that's a KNUST, Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology. He's also lecture, he also lectures in history. Uh, Dr. Guizia Marching Boating at some point will join the conversation. Perhaps if we get him now, we can even start with him before I pick the thoughts of my, of my guest. But let's watch this. Metro TV has had a, a quick interview with, um, or had a quick interview, or had an interview with the General Secretary of the New Patriotic Party, Justin uh, Kudia Frimpong. Watch this which lasted for more than five hours, was expected to bring to the fore the final date for the new patriotic party's parliamentary and presidential elections across the 275 constituencies across the country. But this expectation was cut off after the meeting ended inconclusively on agenda Sini Dia. But I'm sorry to disappoint you this evening that uh, from steering committee through to national executive committee and national council, it has been resolved that uh, as a party we need to do further consultation on the timelines for the presidential and parliamentary elections and within um, the possible shortest time we will come out with the timelines for our presidential 
and parliamentary elections. The General Secretary of the party, Justin Frimpong Kodia, further established some considerations will have to be taken before a date is finally fixed. As a party, you know we believe in consensus building. And as a party, we recognize the views of each stakeholder in our deliberations. So we want to come up with a date that uh, is built on consensus and also compromises also made among key stakeholders. Speaking on the ongoing campaigns by some party faithfuls and aspirants, he had this to say. As to flattery rules, there is no rules. And the rules has nothing to do with the dates that you will set. When the party comes as we rule, uh, with its rules, it's independent of the timeline that we are going to set. And today, even today, as part of the discussion, we, we made mention of the rules that uh, we are bringing forth to regulate the conduct of each um, aspirant. According to Article 13, Clause 1 of the New Patriotic Party's Constitution, election for the party's presidential candidate shall be held not later than 24 months from the date of the national elections, but the party is yet to decide on the date to have a new flag bearer to break the eight. For Metro News, Elvis Andor, Alisa Hotel. All right, thank you very much, Elvis Ando, for bringing us that report. So let me uh, quickly introduce my resource persons once again. The Honorable Mutala uh, Ibrahim Mohammed is the uh, Member of Parliament for the Tamale Central Constituents. I keep telling you that his constituents love him so very much. You have no idea. Good morning, sir. Thank you very much for joining us. It's always a pleasure having you. And uh, let me also welcome Mr. Uh, oh, please, you have to turn on your mic. Your mic is, is still off. Yeah. So good morning once again. Good morning. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs> wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. <laughs> right. Mr. Rick Shum is, hasn't been here in a while. He's been very busy uh, doing campaign for one of the, uh, for his favorite, uh, uh, but I'm not going to mention that. Okay. I haven't <laughs> given you permission. <laughs> Rick Shum, good morning. <laughs> I haven't given you permission. <laughs> good morning. Good to see you. How are you, boss? I'm doing very well. And uh, uh, when I'm sure nice the right to, time. Nice to see you. Nice to see you too. And I'm sure the right time, uh, like you, like many others, you would come up, you would stick your neck out and tell us where you, where you, where you stand. Oh, yeah. For, in the scheme for, of things. Yeah? Definitely. I mean, for now, I don't, have, uh, I don't have your permission to do that. No, not at all. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> yes, You're sir. sticking to the rules. Yes, please. Right. <laughs> <laughs> for now, he's here in his capacity as a spokesperson or a party government communicator and it's that he's going to express purely his opinion it's not an opinion of any candidate for now so here we go now we'll do this quickly because you know it's it's um it's a matter that for me i don't think must must drag this conversation that we can look at the cpi now eric what's happening in your party i mean from where you sit what's your own analysis of why the new Petrocte party has been dilly darling with settling on a date <laughs> Uh, thank you very much. I mean, it's it's a political party, you know, and um, a political party is made up of different people from different spaces with different orientations and all that, who, uh, as it were, would have a certain common goal and vision. And so there's always the possibility of having some uh, divergent views and opinions. And that's also supposed to be something that we should encourage. I mean, we are, if you like, a liberal democratic political party. And so our very tradition actually promotes <clears throat> divergence in views and people expressing these things in, of course, a very respectful, uh, diligent manner. So I, I honestly, uh, if you ask me, I don't see anything wrong with anything that is going on as we speak. Now, uh, it's very important to look at it from even the party's own constitution. And I think that all of this, uh, if you like, uh, confusion or indecision can actually be dealt with if we stick strictly to the cons what the constitution says. And the constitution has been put there to be a guideline to some of these things to ensure that once we get ourselves in these positions, we'll be able to go back to the party's constitution. And what does the constitution say? It says that we should elect, when we are in government, yeah. right? We should elect our flag bearer a year ahead of the, the next general elections. Right. Which is 12 months. Which is 12 months. And then, I mean, when you're in opposition, two years. Two years. Simple. Now, I mean, I'll be a bit controversial. And this would have been a very easy thing to deal with 
in terms of trying to uh, navigate the various views in terms of it, that we should have an early Congress or a late Congress. But the point is that in times past, we've not done things in the right manner and people will be suspicious of the reasons why, for example, people are calling for either a late uh, Congress. Congress or an early one, right? And because for a political party that is supposed to be dynamic and go with the times, or at least you can have some leeway to make certain changes. But because of what has happened in the past in times of uh, sometimes how we've even run primaries and all of those things, there's this general suspicion out there, right? And for me, I'm very objective when it comes to this thing. And it should be a cue to all of us in terms of how we manage these processes and all that. You know, and it's not just the new patriotic party. I and mean, when you're making your uh, initial submission, you're saying that, oh, the NDC has a presumptive candidate. candidate. They'll tell you. Do, do you understand? But the point is that it's, it, 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 it feeds into a certain orientation, perception about how even the average Ghanaian looks at us as political actors. Do you understand? So we say one thing, and then when it comes to like sticking to principle and applying that, we don't want to do that. Right. At least we say that we want to do primaries. We want to actually go ahead and allow a fair, transparent process. The other party says that even the primaries is not important because they already have a presumptive what? Candidate. Candidate. How can that be democratic? Do, do you understand what I'm saying? So we can have but all how did, of this. No, but how then how do you... Okay, so hold no, on. No, but I'm, I'm just making... No, no, just, just, just interrogate I'm, what you yeah, just said. Yeah, yeah, sorry, yeah. before. Because you're, you're, you're building on a certain premise that yeah. political parties tend to, or political parties, um, or some political parties are pretending to respect the tenet of democracy. No, but I'm just making... No, I'm I've, building, heard, I've heard, for instance, Anakomia, yeah. who says... Make I don't know what he means by that, but he yeah. says make Dr. Ba Mahmoud Bamia yeah. the flag bearer of the MPP mm -hmm. and partner him Alan. with Alan. That's, that's, that's a that's a that's a view like a position that has been I mean Come preferred by, by one person who is yes. a member of a political party. Then yes. I I can respect that. Right. I'm actually looking at it from a, a general perspective. Okay. Because so I mean, if, that category yeah, yeah, of yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. You tendencies. See, listen, let me okay. let me finish. You see, if we are in doubt. Let's stick to the constitution. Okay. We're a political party. We have, because your, your, how you act and how you behave should actually mirror the national constitution that we have. Absolutely. And it says that every political party, right, should be able to have systems and uh, regulations in place that actually is not in, if you like, in conflict with the constitution. Right. So if you have a challenge, let's stick to the constitution. And say 12 months to the elections, we would go and vote for a new presidential candidate. Then we won't have this conversation around early and late. Do you understand know, so my, totally my point? Can you imagine that for one reason or the other, elections are held on the 7th of December every year, national elections. And then somebody comes up and says that, oh, this year, let's have the elections in June. Does it actually make sense? I mean, sometimes we are politicians and, you know, and I say this all the time and I'm passionate about it. If you're not careful, the Ghanaian electorate will lose confidence in the political class. Mm. You, you understand? Can you imagine anybody waking up one day and say, oh, this next year the elections will not be held in, on the 7th of December, we will shift it to 20. It makes absolutely no sense. Right. And I'm being very passionate about it. And so... This whole proponent of early or late and all of this, and there's wisdom. I mean, if you listen to everybody, they're making sense. sense and things that are justifiable. But the thing is that if there's a stalemate and we can't agree, then let's stick to what the Constitution says. Simple. I mean, I, I honestly, because if there wasn't any provision within the new patriotic party's Constitution, then we might have a challenge. Right. Do you understand? Right. Where I would have a problem is if there's any justification to vary what the Constitution says, to go beyond the 12 months to the end. I would, have a, I would personally have a problem with that. Do you understand what I'm and saying? And going because, by what the Constitution says means December, you should hold your elections. That's it. Simplicity. 12 months. 
if there's any reason for us to have it early and people believe that, I mean, it makes a lot of sense because, I mean, of the fact that you're going to have a new flag bearer. And so a compelling by, reason. Yeah, you understand. Then also there's whole, and we all know that, this, once you go through an election, there are fallouts. Mm -hmm. You know, so there are certain people who are saying that, well, let's make sure that we have these things on time. And then if there are any fallouts, we'll be able to deal with it well ahead of the elections. It's compelling. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm. Now, what does a late uh, election mean? That you're actually going to flout the party's constitution and do it after then I, have, I would have a problem with that. No, but and the, so no, the no, people... No, but the party... But, but that is why I'm saying that the people who are actually speaking, and I think that I go by that, I say that, let's, like the general secretary said, let's find a compromise. Common ground. And the common ground is very simple. The compromise is that let's stick to what the constitution says. You need to. That's it. I mean, I mean, I don't understand how this can be such a big deal. Regardless of what time we have these elections, there are going to be fallouts. There are going to be people who would, for yeah. one reason or another, feel that they have been wrapped short up change. in short change and all of those things. Now, that is the duty of the National Party to put mechanisms in place to forestall some of these challenges. And how do we arrive at these things? We've done it before, where people are trying to contest elections and for one reason or the other, some of the most frivolous reasons are used to disqualify them, right? Or, I mean, I've, I've said it separately, and I say it in private, and I say it on national TV. Especially even when you are in, in government, you have what we call the carrot and the stick approach. You have, maybe Eric is interested in a constituency somewhere. You feel that this individual has a role to play, either in parliament or in government and all of those things. Don't give him too much pressure and everything. Then you do the... The, the, what you, you can do in the background and right. find ways of ensuring that this individual who is a member of parliament actually is giving the uh, peace of mind to do his work and contribute his quota to whatever. This young, I won't call myself that anymore, but maybe this new person who is coming in who is also believes that they have something to offer would be uh, engage in a way that would make him feel comfortable that let's allow this guy. You can do that. In most political systems, that is done. I have never seen anywhere that every four years uh, parliamentary seats are up for contests. I mean, even the very ones that we are supposed to be copying, right? You have a, a member of uh, Congress who's been there 40 years, 45 years, whatever. And there are, there are ways, there are systems in place to deal with that. So let's assume, I mean, I'm digressing a little bit. Let's assume that you have a member of parliament in your stronghold. That is how like a progressive political party would do it. In your stronghold, all of a sudden, first term, maybe you had 75%. It's, uh, it's come to 65%, 55%. So the party has maybe a written down structure and says that once his performance drops to 40, 55, 65, it means that our uh, seat is under threat. So it automatically activates a primary. You don't go and contest somebody who has 90%, right? Because you just want to be a member of parliament. You know what I'm saying? So these are things that you can put in. If you want to do, I like affirmative action. But affirmative action has to be done progressively. It has to be done well ahead of time. So you have somebody in a constituency who's been uh, nosing around, doing all sorts of things, and then two months to primaries, you say, oh, don't contest because we are doing affirmative action. It doesn't work like, it doesn't that. Work like that. So you, you're proactive, you, you do these things. And then otherwise, when we get to this point of even trying to build a consensus as to early primaries and late primaries and all that. People will not be suspicious of the outcome or the real intentions behind that. But if really we are struggling to have a certain understanding and consensus, let's stick to what the Constitution says. And, that right? the and a party, hmm. for me, as a party, as a, a whole, it's bigger than any individual. And so let's go back to what the Constitution says. And I'm happy that we have people who are strong enough to be able to go and uh, make those 
arguments. In you a understand? consultative process, do you think that the aspirant should be spoken to? Of Their course. should be sought? Of course. But why didn't that, you see, for instance, I mean, the party knew that we'd get to this point. Mm -hmm. So, and the party had its own suspicions. In fact, any, any serious party must have, the, must have an intel as to who is aspiring, mm -hmm. you know, to want to lead and so on and so forth. In fact, when Alan Chairman Ting resigned as, oh. as Minister for Trade and Industry, um, who actually even, you know, sat him down to speak to him to ask him that, look, you want to become the next leader of the party. When do you think that, what, what, what do you think would work for you, early or late? No, but... Pick the thoughts of these people but, so that even before the National Executive meeting on Thursday... I understand. I understand that. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But you see, that's what I'm saying, that I, I, I'm very careful how to put this. If we are not careful as a political class, people will lose confidence in us. A couple, okay. I think it was just a week ago or so, where I heard my good friend Mutala on radio and everywhere, I mean, expressing his, expressing his views about, about how the reshuffle was, reshuffle done. was done yes. in their party. And that is claiming that even proper consultations were, were not done. done all, and you yeah. see, and the reason being that it's, it's, it's almost as if that we do not have a certain, if you like, ability to put down these things even in, in writing and say these are the processes that we have to take if we have to do so. And even when we have it, sometimes, for expediency's sake, we don't want to use it. And that's why I always use the word principle. Okay. Now, before, I think last year or so, the National Party came out with some guidelines as to how presidential aspirants and people who are looking to contest uh, Let's conduct uh, parliamentary primaries should yeah. conduct themselves. Right. You yeah, understand what I'm saying? I don't know if that has changed. If that has changed and new directives have come out, they should come out and, and tell us. You understand what I'm saying? And now, one of the things is that if you leave too much time and you give too much leeway, then people will start doing things that really they're not supposed to do. Because in the final analysis, the most important thing is that the party presents a presidential candidate and then a parliamentary candidate in the various constituencies that will near to victory come 2024. Everything else really doesn't matter. It doesn't really matter how you do it, but okay. it's making sure that people are happy and they are comfortable with the processes. It's not being done in a manner where uh, every now and then you hear the word in our political circles called mafia. Right. Right? You see, and I've always said this consistently, that if you're doing the mafia, you get to a point where there's nobody to mafia, then cannibalization comes in. And so we find in certain places that people are reeling under the same pressure, the same sort of things that they did with other, to other people. They say it shouldn't be done to them. I'll give you a typical example. Someone is a CEO. He contests a certain MP. Right? And then he becomes a member of parliament. He goes to actually unseat that person. Now he goes into parliament. And then he's in parliament. He says that, oh, CEO should not be allowed to contest parliamentary uh, members of parliament because they are giving them pressure in their constitution. How can that be an act of principle? I get that. Doesn't make sense. Does it actually make any sense to you? However, if way beforehand the party comes out with guidelines and provisions and say that if you are a CEO, and that's well ahead of time, and say that if you are a CEO, you are, on, you are not allowed to contest a city member of parliament unless you resign. Then I know that that is the rule. Then if you do that and you are interested in becoming a member of parliament, you put down your job as a CEO. Is that right. not the case? Because we have those guidelines. For example, in areas where we have sitting members of parliament. We've barred DCs and MCs from contesting them. Here too, it, should, it wasn't the case. So you have places where, I mean, there's a, men, uh, a member of parliament, there's a DC, and he's already lazing his boots to contest this guy. And they're supposed to be working together. In, together in tandem. So we can set these rules well, my view is that we can set these rules well ahead of time. If you don't want first time members of parliament, it makes a lot of sense to me. Right? If you don't want first time members of parliament to be contested, say so. Put it in your party's constitution. Constitution. 
or rules and regulations and make it clear that the guy comes, he's going to parliament for the first time. We will give him an opportunity to go again, right? But you don't find a situation where you feel that some persons are being protected, others are not being protected, others are being hounded out. Then that is what creates for me, the, the problem and the suspicious. Me, and so to conclude, I feel that maybe you guys in the media are also making such a big deal about late primaries and early primaries and all right. of those things. But as far as I'm concerned, the solution is Stick to the Constitution. Our, stick to the Constitution. Okay. So for all all these, uh, what should we call the back and forth. Uh, Donald Muntala Mohammed, um, sorry, Ibrahim Mohammed, would, would, you, would you be interested in talking about this? Because you, 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 know, you want to chop your home matter. But this or, is or what happens in the MPP is something that must be of concern to everybody, including. But if he talks about this, I'll talk about the Arisha. I, I, I thought when, it's not on the table. Actually, I, but thought, it can be on. I thought I thought when when our issue came up, they spoke about it. Yes, they did. They did. I think we are all players in these democratic <laughs> processes. Anyway, let me say good morning to you and good morning to my brother. It's been a long time. Yes, yes. Sir. and uh, he's one of the few individuals I say that. This government has given a raw deal. I mean, oh, plus, yes, plus, yes. Plus. I'm it's not, an opinion he holds. Yes, and he's entitled to it. He, and I've been saying it. He, Palgrave, I think Kamal was one. Oh. I think Kamal has been sorted now. The other day I told him that because he's been sorted, he's not even asking of me. <laughs> frankly he's speaking. Going to Saudi Arabia. Isn't yes. It? I mean, frankly speaking, people who have suffered for a cause and continue to suffer for that cause must, must be... Must be. Yes, I mean, frankly speaking, I mean, no, let's, in all fairness. let's face it, politics is not for the Christmas that you think that you are just doing it. If you are doing it and you have a role to play in that government, you should. Unfortunately, there are lots of players, you know, and in the political arena yeah. as to who is given an opportunity to serve and who is not given an opportunity to serve. And I've always quoted Cesaro when he said that politics was a country idiot. Rationality sometimes doesn't work when it comes to politics. Sentiments to a very large extent influence certain political decisions. Emotions influence certain political decisions. The emotions could be how emotionally the appointing authority is attracted to you. Because we have raised concerns about certain people who are not supposed to even be in government. They continue to be in government regardless the challenges even within their own parties and so those things are can is understandable so let me say good morning to your Mischief. viewing Mischief. public and good morning to the good people of tamale of tamale central yeah. to be very honest at a point i was following his his analysis no, that, and, I think, oh, okay, and okay, for okay, a moment okay, i right. asked whether He's my still brother, on track. yes because he said that he <laughs> even, he's, he's even made reference the school, even made reference to the position of some of us right. that we need not have, you know, presidential primaries. President Mahama, in our opinion, yes. should be the flag bearer. And we right. have given justifiable reasons why we think that we didn't, we, we, we should not go for any Congress to elect a flag bearer. He said, you are not just an example. He yes, said no, but democratic. he said that how, you asked that how democratic is it? But meanwhile, in your party, when he raised the issue about Nana Okumi, I said, yes, you are, that's his opinion. You understand that. The opinion expressed on the issue of allowing President Muhammad to go is the opinion of others too. Absolutely. And that one, you say, how democratic it is. is. Is it that you would say that we shouldn't have presidential primary? Yeah, I, when he raised the, that, I, No, when he raised the issue of, of Nana Okumi, I said, well, that is his opinion. Exactly. I mean, you are being disingenuous, disingenuous here. Right. So to be very honest, look... We are practicing a democracy. And I have said that once we have agreed that the way to go is to go through the democratic processes. And mind you, this democracy is not a worldview democracy. It's a democracy that is hoisted on us by the West. Long before the Western style of democracy. Africa, we had our, our democratic systems. If you go to the traditional setup, they have everybody you can think of in, in the processes of how the society is governed. Right. Apart from the chief, you have his elders who you can describe as council of what? Of elders, he has people like in Dagbang. You have the Wulana, you have the Panalana, you have the Imam. These are people who you can describe as ministers. 
of state Cabinet, of that particular yeah. traditional area. And they all have a role to play. The extent to which any time the chief, chief wants to take a decision, he engages those people in consultation. The chief doesn't say, because I am the chief, I can take any decision without consulting. He engages them. And look at the, the democratic, the Western democracy. One of the most important ingredients of the Western democracy that we have adopted is participation and consultation. It's very, very important. You may not necessarily find that in the constitution of your party, but those issues are sine qua non in achieving what is captured in a book called the Constitution of the Party. Because it says that, look, let's also get something very clear. The impression is created as if laws or constitutions are drafted out of some mysterious thing somewhere drafted them. Laws are made by human beings. And every law of every society is anchored on the traditions, the values that that society upholds, upholds to. Mm. Laws are made by human beings. Laws are not made by the only laws that are made that govern our contact is the laws of Allah mm. or the laws of God as captured in scripture. But in societies, when we have constitutions and laws made, they are made by human beings. And all those laws are made, made based on the beliefs, the values that society holds. I'll give you a classical example. During the Nuremberg trial, when the Nazi Germans who were, were being tried for the crimes they committed against humanity, you know, criminal courts of justice, and the fact that they killed millions of Jews without any justification, some of them in their defense, they said, look, we were not committing any crime by the Nazi German law. Because at that time, it was permissible to kill Jews. So as far as they are concerned, you know, you know, terrible as the, the crimes they committed against Jews were, they found justification in saying that we didn't commit any, any, crime. any crime. I'll give you another example. In our part of the society, it is permissible to marry more than one wife. That is the African belief system of marriage. Okay? I'm not even going to talk about Islam. I'm talking about Ghana. Our African, even our laws, our customary laws permits you to do that. You go to the Western world, it is not permissible to marry more than one wife. Now here, our laws frowns upon unnatural canal knowledge, right? LGBTQ nonsense, our laws are against them. You go to the Western world, their law supports them. Because every law that is made, it is made to suit the values of the people living in that society. Even in the Western world, prior to this, this madness that has engulfed a lot of these policy makers in the Western world, their laws were against LGBTQ. Today, their laws have been amended to suit that interest. That you go to churches, mm -hmm. you find people, pastors, who would commit to marriage to men, to women, against the teachings of the Bible. Are you getting what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it is about the society and what you value. Now let's come to look at our political parties. Okay. The constitutions of political parties or the laws or regulations governing the conduct of people in every political party, those laws, those regulations by determined collectively by the people who believe in that particular party. I agree with you when you say that. In resolving some of these issues, let's look at what the constitution of the MPP says. The constitution of the MPP says that you should have elected your presidential candidate at certain time, or at least two years when you are in, in, in opposition, opposition yeah. and one year, right, when, uh, when you are in, in government. In government. In government. Yeah. That's what your constitution says. Yeah. But in every election, you have what they call the, the, the elections, whatever, a committee, I've forgotten the term that is being used by all political parties. But can they take that decision to amend what is captured in the constitution before or the constitution has given them the authority to do so. Can I just uh, okay. yeah. so in our case we have the National Council okay. that is vested with the powers to vary dates. Okay. Regardless what the constitution says. Yes. So National Council, which is the highest decision, decision maker. We have Congress. Congress. Yeah. No, so after Congress, National yeah. Council then you come Congress. So they give they clothe with those powers. Now, my argument is that because there seems to be a lot of, if you like, uh, different views, 
then you go back to what is actually in the constitution. In the constitution. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But National Council has all the right to vary, and that is why the initial discussion was about having consultation. So these consultations are actually done prior to Congress. the National Council meeting, because you, you can't be in a meeting, for, that meeting lasted for five hours. And what it means is that you can't have those consultations during the meeting. So the consultations are done prior to that, and some kind of consensus is met. And then that's, what, a, that's what a lot yeah. of people find surprising. Yeah, yeah, the consultation right. was not done. No, it was done. It was done? Because the so original, the, 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 original talking about? the original meeting, right? Yes. Was meant was slated for the 31st of January. Okay. And it was actually shifted forward. Uh, postponed for two more days to okay. for, to allow for the consultations. Right. What it means is that the consultation was not conclusive. Okay. Okay. And so so not in that I forget that. Yeah. I my the information I got was that even on at that particular meeting, the way some of our colleagues spoke, you know, to the president was was terrible. They disagreed really? with him. Oh yes, they disagreed with That's him. That's information you are picking yes, up. Yes, they disagreed with him very and strongly. made their position. Very, very strong because against the president the wants a late Congress. Exactly, and he's looking no. at the first quarter next no, year. No, no, but but you see, you see, that is all what democracy is all about. Yes. Look, as long as but you that's can, a controversial yeah, of the party. No, I'm saying that as long. But it won't be. I'm it not talking about the position taken by the by president. The, president. Okay. the fact that people okay. can even disagree with him. Right. As long as the disagreement is done within the ambit of law. You with, don't go with, after with, a with, person. You don't attack a person. You disagree with the position taken by a person. That is all democracy yeah. is all about. <clears> but you see. I thought that the, the 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 MPP, you know, incompetence disheveled just the governance of this country or our economy. Little did I know that it has ex been extended to how they manage their affairs as a political party. But but Moro, what is also occasioning some of this is the system of democracy we practice. To the extent that a lot lot of the things we do seem to be unique if you juxtapose them with the Westminster system mm -hmm. of democracy practice in the United Kingdom or the presidential or the executive you know, system practice in the United States of America. Because mind you, we have agreed to blend these two systems because of experiences. Mm -hmm. we, have, we have experienced the Westminster system or the parliamentary system in this, this country after independence before. That was what we did. We, that system was used to rule this country by the so-called colonial masters. When we gained independence, Nkrumah proceeded with the same system. Okay, now you have another one, the, the Second Republic, we decided to move to the executive system. In fact, we, we ran the same, I think in the Third Republic, that yes. we decided to move to the executive system. But the 1992 constitution, yep. by the way, a constitution which drafting you people boycotted because you couldn't fathom sitting with fishermen and farmers and traders and nurses to draft a constitution. You said you, you are, were too big yeah, and too precise. Yeah, you are, you are but digre that's a fact. You are digressing. Why am I digressing? You are digressing. I'm making when you say you people, who are you The referring? Buzet Danko tradition, the MPP. You boycotted <laughs> it. That's a fact. So I'm saying that you decided not to because you couldn't fathom sitting with such people. Right. Whatever the case is, mm. the constitution we, pr we use now is the hybrid system. And we took into consideration the challenges we encountered in practicing both the Westminster system and the executive system. system. So certain things are unique, if you like. And mind you, all the political parties' constitution, no provision in their constitution should contravene any provision in the 1992 Absolutely. constitution. So it has some bearing. However, in managing a group of people, there are some times that you need to be amenable but the amenability should not contravene even a provision in your constitution. And that's where I agree with you. When you say that when you don't have a clear part, then let's, you should come and look at what the constitution of your party says. It is not only in the MPP. It is found in every political party. However, we must respect the democratic tenets as captured in the laws that are made by the same MPP. And I agree absolutely with you that let's see how we, the constitution says. But even when you are taking a decision as a body, the National Council, council. Yes. the National Council, I, I don't want to believe that they can do that 
which contravenes the provisions in your constitution. If they have even that capacity, the constitution of the MPP would have given them the opportunity under some circumstances. Yes, yes, yes. Extenuating yes. circumstances. Yes, yes. in this yes. country. Yes. We like are a force majeure. majeure. We are elected. Or anything, but they, yeah. they are allowed to do that. Yes. We're yes. having elections on the 7th of December. Mm. May God forbid. Something happens. The elections could be postponed. Absolutely. If there is a catastrophe, a calamity that we do not see, yeah. it's possible. Yeah. But there must be a strong justification mm. why you should have a postponement of the, election. the elections. The last point I want to make on the issue of where DC is, you know, should not contest with uh, sitting MPs or where, if you like, national executive or regional executive officers should not. It makes a lot of sense. But I'm saying that sometimes those who are given the power to do that, they do that mindful of their emotions, sentiments. In fact, one person can look at just one MP and then use his influence to, to change a decision of a party. Mm -hmm. So if I am very influential in, in those, in the group of people who, <laughs> who determine something, and I have my, let's say my brother or my uncle who is contesting, mm -hmm. And I know that if we want to go strictly by what the constitution of the party says, that person may not be able to contest. Unfortunately, such people can even influence the decision. When do you know that that decision is just going to satisfy an individual, mm -hmm. but not the political party? And that is where the worry, 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 in my opinion, comes. I remember in 2016, there was directive by the NDC that DC is who intended to contest the election should resign at a particular period, I don't know whether it was one year mm -hmm. or two years before the elections. And for me, that made a lot of sense. If you had the DCE contesting a sitting MP, now the DCE contests with that sitting MP at the primaries, mm -hmm. and the DCE wins, and the sitting MP loses, mm -hmm. and you need these two people to prosecute the elections. It's going to be difficult. It's going to be difficult. Or you have the because DC. Because the suspicion is that a DC may have used the resources. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Look, I have had, to I've had MPs who have complained, okay. particularly mm. MPs from ruling government, mm -hmm. that as they are in, the cons they yes. are in parliament working, working for the constituency, yes. you have DCEs undermining them. Yes. Mm -hmm. Look, if you have your common fund, for example, your common fund, I am not a signatory to my common fund. Yes. No MP is a signatory to your common fund. Even if you want to know how much you have in your MP's common fund, a letter it. must be written, signed by the DC. Mm -hmm. So if you have a DC who intends to, to contest you, yes. your money comes, he refuses to release the money. Right. He won't even tell you how much you are. There will be friction. Yeah. And where you, where you have a swing constituency, mm -hmm. yeah. that will be extremely difficult. That's true. Our friend, uh, Honorable Bauer, yes, 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 yes. even up till the time we went into the 2020 elections, Honorable Bauer had almost 300,000 Ghana cities in his MP's account. And he had projects he wanted to execute. The DC, mm -hmm. who was the MPP parliamentary candidate, wanting to contest him, refused to, to do what was needed. Wow. And these are two political parties. Yes, yes. I'm more or less the same party. Absolutely. So this thing, I think the two political parties should take is, yes. a second look Figure at it. Out. For me, mm. you cannot be a DC at the same time you want to be an MP, when you want to work for the party, if you want to do so, then resign. Look, it brings to fore another issue, that we need to take a second look at our, con our con constitution, where the president's hands are tied, that he must appoint more than 50% exactly, yeah. of his ministers <coughs> from, from parliament. parliament. There are people who aspire to come to parliament, not that they have the desire to legislate, but they see parliament as a way to become no, ministers of end. state. So, yes. so, 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 yes, clearly, yes, yes, yes. so if you go into That's an election, the ultimate objective. your intention is not that you want to be a member of parliament. Yes, yes. Your intention is not to represent your constituency. Yes. Your intention is not to you legislate. Want to you want president. to catch the eye of the president. Yeah. That for me, mm. if we insulate that, yeah. that the president hands should not be tied, mm. He can decide to, to appoint all his ministers from parliament yeah. or decide to appoint all his ministers outside right. parliament. So that when you are going to legislate, you are going to parliament just to as do, a member yeah, of parliament. Clear, yeah. And for me, that would ensure even the independence yeah. of the legislative arm, arm of government. That's but as true. long as the legislature it loses it that independence, to the executive. Exactly, Absolutely. that's because, where the Because is. you can't do something against the president. No. Otherwise, you cannot uh, ah, do it. But you see, the, 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 the policy proposal that you, you brought out, fantastic idea. You talked about, for instance, if you are if you're running um, a state-owned organi a, a state enterprise or CEO of some whatever organization, agency, meaning whatever, you must be told that once you have an interest in contesting as member of parliament, resign. But here's the problem. 
Normally when, and you know, I have a very good friend the MPP who today is running one of the uh, agencies. He wants to become a member of parliament somewhere in the Ashanti region. He's, he's, he doesn't go to the grounds himself. He has his assigns. Who do the groundwork for him? Mm-hmm. You know, so he can tell us, oh, oh media, it's, it's just some people who are interested in, you know, um, interested in me becoming a member of parliament, but I haven't thought about it. So the person will wait to the 11th hour, and then all of a sudden, the person will just pop up from nowhere and say, oh, I want to become a member Mor- of parliament. Mor- so can you, can you penalize such a person? Mor- Same I, with the MCC I, 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 I'm scenario. not against CEOs or no, anybody or MPs or uh, ministers or deputy yeah, ministers yeah, I know, in principle, contesting. Not, yes. Seats of yeah, where we, we like income strongholds, yeah, yeah, especially strongholds. All I am saying is that it seems that it, it creates challenges. And if there's a, a firm position, the party should have a firm position on that. And those things should be spelled out, right, well ahead of time, right? And so I use that example and the affirmative action example, where you want to encourage women to play active role in politics and in parliament. You want that. It's beautiful. Yeah. It's a progressive thing to do, and it's really the most sensible you thing to do. You know what happened with the MPP? However... The same women kicked against it. L- listen, however... Wow. Yeah. However, right? However, it has to be in a manner that is progressive. documented okay, all right. and progressive. So it says that, okay, 25% of all our seats are for women. If you want to, anybody that will be allowed to contest that should be another woman or her performance has to drop to a certain level to activate a primary. Okay. Because that is where the, I mean, first class democracies do. It is only here that for one reason or the other. How do every you identify four, those seats that must be exclusive? You can do that. Women. Because normally what they do in other jurisdictions is yes. that those seats are supposedly your stronghold seats. Okay. So you impose candidates on that. You're not imposing. No, it's not imposing. You're not, you're not imposing. Because even our, 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 our constitution also says that mm. the party sponsors the candidate to run on behalf of the party to go to parliament. Yeah, even yeah. your filing fees. You know what I'm saying? Party. So what it means is that we do not necessarily even have to do primaries. They, then that's imposition. No, no, no. But, but that's what I'm saying. That the party can go now, and choose. Now you're not agreeing with us that the NPC no, no, NBC no, no, no. I'm not. Yeah, this, this, yeah, 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 President yes, Mahama I'm just saying. Should be the candidate. I'm just saying. No, no. We are, we are, so we are, we are saying two different yes. things. We are talking about different things. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Jumping the gun. All that I'm saying is that. All I'm saying is that. So for us to be able to do that effectively, mm. right? It has to be documented. It has to be ahead of time. So even this conversation around. Uh, sitting members of parliament being hounded and all of those. And I have an interest in a constituency. I mean, and in principle, the moment... You do? Yes, I still, I mean, yes. I, I mean, I've contested... And yeah, sure, sure, sure. Right? Of, of, right. Oforiata fought him. Right. Ha, ha, I didn't contest an Oforiata. Oh, but he fought you. Yeah. That's, that's right, right. right. I didn't, right. You, know, you, know, you understand, you know, <laughs> But you see, right. the point is that sometimes when we have this conversation, we have to take ourselves out. In right. principle, mm-hmm. I go to primaries, and then the ne- very next day, I lose the primaries, and we've decided to vote for maybe the incumbent or somebody else. I can't be seen in the constituency undermining the MP. The MP. Yeah. So even in my case, people have, oh, we are talking about oh, oh, when we're you know, on Baha BM, you know, that kind of thing. True. But the truth of the matter is that it's an out of principle. Yeah. Now, once the party opens up nominations and all gives the, the green light that you can contest. What it means is that it's fair game, right? You've allowed the member of parliament who is also a member of your political party to do their job. You know what I'm saying? Now, in a case where I, from the very next day, it's almost as if I'm in contest with him. It's, dis- it's a distraction. It doesn't allow for proper, even cohesion within the, the small constituency that we have and all that. And you already create challenges. And our people are not very good Democrats when it comes to even knowing that Moro supported Eric once. The moment Moro supported me in the primaries and I did not win and the person becomes an incumbent, all my people have become yeah. enemies. And that shouldn't be the case, yes, I, right? right? Just to wrap up. So this challenge with the city members of parliament being hounded and sometimes being 
there's a distraction and they're not focused on the work and all that. It's as a result of us not having those clear guidelines. And sometimes people have to be penalized. Now, if people have to be penalized, it means that the members of parliament themselves are also sticking to the rules. Do you understand? So sometimes, for example, you hear that somebody is being protected. And the caliber of persons that are being protected, sometimes I feel that it's even an insult because these are people who are established, high caliber persons who do not need any protection. All that happens is that you just create unnecessary tension. Are you referring to change? No, but you see, Eric, you're yeah. looking at just one side of this high no. caliber. What, sorry, sorry about this. No, you understand. Look, take the majority leader. Yes. The member of parliament for Swami. Mm -hmm. Honorable, Honorable James Abutsu. Mm -hmm. He may be a fantastic um, advocate in parliament. Mm -hmm. Fantastic leader in parliament, but may not necessarily be doing well in his constituency. How, what, what's the position? No, they stoned him in his constituency. No, no, but, but, if he was but, doing but, well. but, 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 but that is, that is, that's so, it. So, so I'm saying that uh -huh. if, if mm -hmm. you go to parliament and you deliver mm -hmm. and you impress, but there are some challenges in your constituency, mm -hmm. it could be due to anything. Mm -hmm. Chieftaincy, not necessarily performance, it could be chieftaincy, anything. Mm -hmm. You are saying that because the person has some gravitas in parliament, mm -hmm. The person must be protected by virtue of that, even if no. on the grounds the I, person I, is I not... I didn't, I didn't no, say I'm that. No, I'm, yeah, I'm yeah, seeking clarity. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm asking. I didn't say that. Okay. So what I mean is that yes. if, for argument purposes, the person has done brilliantly in parliament, yes. and they have major issues in, his constituency. in the constituency, that's the reason why you have a constituency party, regional party, and national yeah. party. Mm. Then apart from that, the only time that a primary, right, should be activated is that you have pre, if you like, preempted performance levels. Right. And he said, okay, this is our stronghold. When you take, do a trend analysis of the last three elections, we, we are dipping. Now, when we were doing 75%, now we are doing 55%. Well, approval 52. rating is dropping. So approval rating is dropping. Yeah. So the party, know, this is not about somebody's whims and caprices yeah. or based on emotions yeah. or he's my friend. Mr. Member of Parliament, this is our stronghold. Your threshold is 60%, now it's 54%. Yeah. We are activating a primary. Yeah, when you go through the primary and you win, what it means is that it's been a reaffirmation of your popularity within the party base and the constituency. Go ahead and contest. contest. Right. Makes sense. It makes sense. No, it because doesn't. No, I disagree. No, no, but because but that is what happens I'll in other... Why. Then in other jurisdictions, like the UK, for example, like your... Let's say our, our constituency parties, like polling station executives plus the constituency executives, would pass a vote of no confidence or confidence or whatever in you. When it drops to a certain level, a primary, you are not removed. A primary, right, is activated. So if the member of parliament is doing well, both at the constituency level <coughs> and in parliament, then really, in principle, there's actually no reason to go out there and actively trying to disengage them from, from the way. And the reason why I'm saying that is that we have become more democratic than the, the ones that we are actually, I mean, learning from. Learning from or emulating. Right? Uh, emulating, right? So how, when was the last time you heard that those uh, senatorial primaries in America? Every few years or so, somebody yeah. has contested three, four, five, yeah. six, seven times. Yeah. And, there's, because, and I'm saying this based on the fact that I am an interested party. I have interest in a, a, a constituency, but objectivity and principle is also very important in this whole you said game. You're not personalizing. You yeah, 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 that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Because if we, we don't do that, what tends to happen is that one, you lose good talent, yeah. and you also prevent good talent from coming in. in. You don't have a future. You don't, yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. And you, so we need to find a fine blend, a mix right of people, persons who have experience, and the yeah. ones that we know that this guy is a potential. Brilliant stuff. You understand? Well, you know yeah, and that we can be able to bring him so to you parliament. Know what, you know why I disagree? Yeah, we have, sorry, sorry, you can disagree, though. Uh, first of all, I need, I need to state that um, our CPI, Corruption Perception Index... No, but I just want to bring no, no, two sorry, a minute. Yeah. No, sorry. Uh, uh, let me do this. Mutala, we, it's 9.54, and we have just three minutes to wrap up. And so, really? Yeah, because the Ayaraga interview was an hour. But we could do CPI next week. That's fine. Um, but let me just do this quickly. There's a very interesting article that, uh, not an article, but a WhatsApp message that a very good friend of mine is in the policy space sent, and I'll just read this briefly before you come in and you do the wrapping up, because Erica said everything he needs to say. And it says, says from Mr. Jason Tutu, 
Uh, it says, good morning, Mr. Uh, uh, good morning, Moro. These are my thoughts on the election dates for the MPP's primaries. An early election within the MPP may not portend well for the party as a whole. Uh, one, one on one hand, and potentially bad for Dr. Bamia on the other hand. This can be looked at in two dimensions. But why do Dr. Dr. <laughs> Dr. Bamia? Just is Dr. Bamia your preference? He has, a, he has a crystal ball. He has a crystal ball, eh? That's what I was saying. <laughs> <laughs> it's a system looked at in two dimensions. The economic angle and the internal political uh, perspective. Economic. Once a standard bearer is elected, the president becomes a lame duck leader. Allegiances would immediately shift strongly to the successful candidates, making it difficult for the president to galvanize commitment and support for the rest of his term in office. This can only make things worse for the country and the party, since the economic economy today is in a terrible state, and good efforts is required to stabilize it before the next elections. But if allegiances and commitment are fragmented via early election, it will become next, next to impossible to stabilize the economy, hence worsening the chances of the party come December 2024. One, when it is looked at this way, an early election is not good for the current government, nor any of the candidates who may emerge victorious. Two, internal politicking is widely assumed that top counts of the incumbent favor a Baumia leadership. With this in mind, an early election around this time, when the economy is it's failing this badly, may not go to the benefits, may not go to benefit the government's supposed economic risk it. However, <laughs> if internal elections are delayed and funding from the IMF kicks in, economic indicators may recover decently, creating a pedestal for Baumia to have a good go at the candidacy contest. Kindly, Alan seems to be gathering momentum in his campaign, and he can relatively insulate himself from the economic woes better than Bamiya. So, assuming the powers that be favor Bamiya, they rather delay the contest to, until economic issues, which affect the delegates as well, get better than the current uh, uh, circumstances. But I think that, I, I think, Jason, my only small disagreement is that I think you're assuming, quite interestingly, that the economic issues would hold sway. Like, they are, they are the stronger determining factors when it comes to the, the, the factors that influence or inform the decision-making process of the electorate. If that indeed has been established, then your argument will hold to it. But if not, then it means, you know, because we've heard all kinds of things that are being said as to why who should go where, who should lead the new picture. There's a talk about Nobu Dangwa tradition. That's nothing to do with economics. You know, there's talk about, um, how do you call it, um, the fact that someone like Dr. Baumia has been leading you know, there's all kinds of reasons. I don't want to do that. That's not my job. But Moro, because Moro, we don't have all Moro, time. Uh, Moro, first and foremost, I have two disagreements. Yes, but you have two minutes uh, to do this. Yes, and I have listened to a lot of argument that is made that yes. these elections are going to be based the on economy. the economy. That is not true. Really? You don't think so? Every, Every election has every, been based on the economy. No, no. Any time we are changing a government in this country, uh -huh. whether through the ballot or through the bullet, corruption has always been the determinant. And in fact, in 2016... Regardless the monumental economic successes that the NDC chalked, mm -hmm. the MPP tried to tie everything to corruption. So I'm not saying that the economy doesn't play a role, yes. but to suggest that the economy plays a more central role than corruption is absolutely not true. The facts do not support that. The facts do not support that. Okay. In fact, from, from after independence, look, to the extent, Nkrumah, who nobody had a scintilla of evidence against Nkrumah for corruption, the extent to which even his dresses were embossed, property of, of Ghana. When he left office, he had not, not even a home to himself. The justification for the criminal overthrow of Nkrumah was corruption. The NLC. But, but Musa, if you're the, saying, no, I'm, if you're saying I'm that, giving you, then, I'm then giving you're saying, you the evidence. I'm not, that saying, that I'm not saying economy doesn't play a role. Yes. But I'm saying that any time... The corruption has been the central stage. Even if they want to argue on the basis of the economy, they tied with corruption. Look at what the MPP did. Everything we did, the monumental infrastructure development, it says it was overbloated. It was this, and therefore there was corruption. That is why I stand to be corrected. Show me one single time we change a government in this country, whether through the ballot or through the bullet, that corruption is not used as justification. In fact, Buzia, when Buzia was removed from office, the reasons by the Achampong administration was that he was fantastically corrupt. So corruption you feel is more that. central. Yeah, it is. Corruption has always been central. Corruption has always been central. Let me central. read it. Alasan Dibaba says, I'm passionately pleading with this uh, eighth parliament to make a legislation barring any president of this country from appointing members of parliament as ministers. I beg no, you. No, it's in the constitution. Do that for the betterment of the, no, to bar. No, he but. Says, bar members of parliament from becoming uh, Alasan Dibaba. No, but the constitution says that he must appoint more than 50% of yeah, his ministers. No, but then that, we need a referendum. 
Yeah, but you, but you are advocating for the same so, thing. So, no, I'm saying that it's, it's not a decision that can be taken by parliament. No, it's, it's a decision it says, that... It says the constitution must be reviewed to bar... In fact, the constitutional amendment... Okay, it's... It's, 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 it's just part, but it, hasn't, it hasn't it been activated. It takes the political will of the government, yeah, the, yeah, the to authority to do to so, it, so that we go into an... And I will yeah. support it any day, even when I was a deputy minister, publicly stated that wow. I will support we'll that decision. We'll have to do a part of this. But on the issue of the let me just conclude on it. It is very clear that this government is fantastically corrupt. Oh, the lowest of the NDC, the lowest, was 43. The highest of this government has been 43. In fact, the highest we ever chalked ah, under the Corruption Perception <laughs> Index in Butala, this country. What are you talking I'm about? saying that the highest, oh, listen, I'm certain facts, the on. highest well, we have ever scored in this country was scored, speech, under, as we, as we was scored under President Muhammad. That was uh -huh. in 2014, uh -huh. when we had 48%. Uh -huh. In fact, 2015, 47%. Uh -huh. Come and look at 2017. You scored 40%. Mind you, the 2016 elections, you won the elections at the bulk of series of allegations against President Mahama. When you people went to town but and said that President Mahama had hotels in Dubai, you guys data. went to town. Oh, but deliberately, you don't know how to analyze how? data. So look at it. There's this is thing where I would draw yeah. the curtain. I'm talking about the highest uh, we ever scored. So, yeah, but we what are you talking? We are talking about today. Yes, today we are 43. And the we, lowest under we, President Muhammad so, was 43. So we inherited thank, thank 43 from you. For I'm saying, yes. Watching another edition. <laughs> no, so you sorry, 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 guys. We have to go. <laughs> so sorry, we, we have to go. Sorry, we have to go. Yes. All right. So, thank you very much, Abdallah and the crew, Tonado and everybody else, uh, Jesus and everybody. Thank you very much for uh, tuning in to another edition of Inside Pages. Uh, Mutala Mohammed and uh, Mr. Eric uh, uh, Mr. Eric Chum, thank you so very much for joining us. And also, the owner of Yariga. We couldn't speak to the, um, Dr. Machi Boatin because something came up. There's, there's been an emergency, so we couldn't speak to him. But next week, depending on how things go this week, we'll come back to talk about the MPP uh, issues. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye. Uh -huh.